Hello everybody, it's Danielle Walker from Against All Grain and I am going to show you today how to make um, some paleo fudge pops, fudgesicles if you will. Um, I have a recipe that's on my blog that have been has been super popular for many years, um, but I always hear from people that they're egg free, so I'm re-adapting it um, to be egg free. I'm going to use gelatin, so there's some added health benefits there, um, but I'm gonna show you how to make that and then I will do a little Q&A. So first, tell me who's here, like always, where you're from. Hi, Sonia. Um, nice to have you here. Um, and I'm also going to post right now in the comments um, a few helpful links that will um, be helpful for you during this, this demo. Um, thanks, Christina. That's super sweet of you. Amy, fudge anything sounds fab. I agree. Um, hi, Robin. Hi, Kristen, thank you. I'm so happy you like my cookbooks. Uh, Michelle from Long Beach, hello. Speaking of my cookbooks, if everybody sees, well, that there, just a quick little tease for you, uh, number three. Uh, let's see, oh good, Mary, I'm glad your toddler is going to love me or you, whoever. Um, that's why I'm making these today. It's 100 degrees um, outside today. Sorry for all of you guys who just had snow over the weekend. I think Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, I know heard I heard that and maybe Chicago. Um, but it's 100 degrees. So we planted our garden this weekend and my son has been asking for fudge pops and ice cream and all things summer. Um, so that's why I'm going to make these today. Hi from Austin and nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Um, hi, Noelle. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, thank you, Michelle. That's very sweet. Um, Layla from San Diego. I wish I could be in San Diego right now. That sounds fabulous. Emily, I can't wait for celebrations as well. Um, let's see, Jenna from Georgia. And also, guys, um, I'm going to be posting this new recipe on my blog in a few days. So I'm going to do it right now on video, and then I'll give you the full recipe. It's super, super easy, though, so you probably could just write it all down. Hi, obsessed with your dairy-free ranch, Jill. Thank you. Um, Andrea, I love the heat. I don't really love the heat. I'm good with like 70 and sunny, but I'm not a big 100-degree person. Um, hi, Kim from Knoxville. Thank you, Carrie. Um, hi, Rita from Minnesota. All right, guys, so I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna pass the um, phone off here to my lovely assistant, Sydney, who's going to film. Um, just a second. Okay, that is on me, correct? Yep. <laughs> okay, so um, we're just gonna start with some coconut milk. Actually, before I jumped on live, I put a quarter cup of coconut milk into this bowl and I sprinkled two and a half teaspoons of gelatin over top. So we've talked about gelatin a lot actually lately on Facebook um, as well as on my blog. And um, you want to make sure that you get, well, if you're getting vital proteins, you want the green label. Hold on, I'll grab it for you. Um, actually, I have both here. So these are both brands that I recommend. Um, lately, I've been doing Vital Proteins because I can verify that it is grass-fed, 100% um, pure collagen protein. It's a great brand. They also make the collagen that you can put into smoothies and things like that that doesn't gel up in um, water. So you want the green label for this one. If you're getting Great Lakes, which is also a good brand, um, you wanna get the red label. So these are the two that you'd be looking for. If you're just going to your grocery store, um, Knox brand, K-N-O-X, in the box, um, unflavored gelatin powder will work as well. Um, so the reason why I put this in a bowl was because gelatin needs to do something, they call it blooming. Basically, it just softens the gelatin so that it will melt faster in the hot liquid and it will um, incorporate a little bit better rather than having little gelatin blobs in your mix. Uh, so I'm going to start with two cups of coconut milk. And you guys hear me talk a lot about different types of coconut milk, but again, I will say it again, if I'm ever calling for coconut milk, I'm never calling for the box variety. Those all have additives in them to make them shelf stable. So you wanna make sure to grab the can um, and full fat. And I like this brand, there's two brands that I buy. This natural value I love because it's in a BPA free can and there's no guar gum in this. Um, so if you are sensitive to legumes, even though the guar gum is so minuscule in some of the other um, cans, sometimes people react to it. My husband actually reacts to it. He kind of gets bloated um, if I use too much coconut milk with it in there. So if you can't tolerate it, you can get this one. It's not going to be as smooth. Um, I can show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the phone, but because the guar gum's not in there, 
The coconut meat is definitely a little bit thicker. Um, it's a little bit more gritty, but it's really great if you're going to be warming it because it all incorporates after you warm it. Um, I also like this one because it's, I think it's a little higher in the coconut fat, which is really nice for popsicles because the water is what freezes and kind of crystallizes in the freezer. So the higher fat content, um, the better for creaminess. Um, but this one won't work for coconut milk whipped cream. So there's kind of some different nuances. I've kind of found what works best for different things and, and what works best for others. So um, we want also to make sure that you are mixing up your coconut milk before you use it. So a lot of times if I'm not heating it up, what I'll do is set it in a bowl of warm water and then just give it a really good shake. And that'll incorporate that coconut water and the coconut meat that kind of raises to the top. Uh, so we've got two cups coconut milk that we're just going to add to a saucepan and I'm going to put that over medium low. We really don't um, need this to get super hot um, because we're not really melting anything besides trying to get the cocoa powder to incorporate and then also the gelatin <laughs> to soften. Um, but I am using raw cacao powder so that's another reason why I don't want this to get too hot because I don't want it to um, basically heat out all of the nutrients um, that are left in raw cacao powder. So obviously it's high in antioxidants, um, but if you're wondering kind of the difference between raw and regular baking cocoa powder, this one is not processed, so it still has um, some of the minerals and nutrients that are left in it. Um, so I try to use that whenever possible, but of course if you're gonna be boiling something, and depending on how hot you make it, it may not matter. <laughs> um, but I like the flavor of this. It has a really great, just kind of rich chocolate flavor because it's unprocessed, so it's just the cacao beans pretty much. And so we're just going to whisk that together. Asher usually makes these with me, but he's at school. So we'll have a nice treat waiting for him tomorrow. Okay. And we're gonna just do about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then a little bit of sea salt because chocolate has to have a teeny bit of sea salt to bring out that depth of flavor, in my opinion, at least. <laughs> if these weren't for kids, I would probably add a little bit of espresso powder, personally. Okay, and then half a cup of maple syrup. You could use honey too if you want. Um, personally, I love chocolate and maple together. So that's my sweetener of choice. Now, if you don't wanna do a liquid um, sweetener like maple or honey and you wanna try to do stevia or something like that, that should work perfectly fine in this recipe. Um, sometimes if I'm using maple syrup or honey in a baked recipe, that's accounted, that the liquid is accounted for in there. So when I'm asked sometimes to switch out a powdered um, sweetener like a stevia, that will be a bit different because you would need to accommodate for that lack of liquid. But for something like this, you can definitely substitute out whichever sweetener you'd like. All right, and that's it. Um, so we're just going to add now the gelatin. It's not boiling, you don't need it to boil, just again, medium low heat. So the gelatin has been sitting there for about 10 minutes and this is what's called bloomed gelatin. So you're gonna get, like I said, unflavored, um, unsweetened gelatin powder. It can also come in sheets, but you want to do the powder for this. And it's kind of like, kind of, well, I guess like jello. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so then I'm going to just scoop that in. And you really want to make sure that it all is incorporated and melted. The first time I used gelatin in an ice cream, I wasn't very familiar with it. And so A, I didn't bloom it. Um, B, I didn't make sure that it was all incorporated, and so when we ate our ice cream, everybody was like crunching into these little balls of gelatin and wondering what, what it was. Um, so I'm very careful now. Um, so you just whisk it until you don't see it anymore, and if you really want to be careful, extra cautious, you can run it through kind of a mesh sieve just to make sure that you catch any that didn't dissolve, but with blooming it, you shouldn't have a problem. Um, and so then I'm just gonna pour it into these popsicle molds and stick it in the freezer. It takes about six hours to set. Um, and the reason, by the way, that I'm using gelatin also, which I didn't talk about that, so I have a recipe, like I mentioned, that uses egg yolks. 
Um, so it's kind of like a custard fudgesicle, uh, which is the way that most ice creams start as well. And the eggs help add fat, which helps keep them, you know, from getting too icy, kind of that crystallized, that thing that can happen when you make a dairy-free frozen treat. Um, and so I took out the egg yolks and added gelatin because that helps keep it a little bit creamier and helps reduce that ice factor. Uh, and it kind of just melts in your mouth. So it's not like jello. I know it sounds kind of gross at first, but it really ends up just making it really creamy um, and fudgy. And so after you kind of bite into it, it just ends up melting in your mouth and it's super delicious. And my little guy loves this. So um, you also can take my smoothie recipe that uses avocado, which you've probably all seen, and freeze that as well. Um, and so that's a little healthier if you wanna do something a bit healthier. Um, you could even throw in some spinach into the blender before you do it, your kids will never notice. That's a lot of times what I do, especially if I end up with a little bit of extra smoothie in the morning. Um, I just throw it into a couple of these and freeze the extra, and we have a little bit of a treat over the weekend. So this um, popsicle mold I linked already up above in the comments. And it's BPA free and um, you can get it on Amazon. You can get popsicle molds wherever. Um, I've been seeing them even at like Whole Foods. Um, Ikea sells them, but I wouldn't vouch for the plastic. Um, but you are gonna have to use plastic most likely with these. So again, we're not getting this too hot and we're also not cooking in it. So I'm not too concerned, but um, you know, you might be able to find something else if you're not comfortable using plastic. Uh, so, I'm just going to pour that, you know what, well, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna pour it into this because it'll make it a little bit easier for me to pour into the popsicle molds. And while I'm doing that, I can start taking some questions, if there are any. Uh, what brand probiotic do you use for Asher? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I can't remember, I think it's Claire Labs. I know I use that for Easton and I, can't, I bought one the other day for him and I can't remember what the brand name is. <laughs> I'll have to look at that and I can come back and respond to that question in the comments. What are your thoughts on refined and unrefined coconut oil? Okay, so um, I typically like to use unrefined virgin coconut oil because it is definitely more beneficial. Um, but I love to use refined or expeller pressed. Um, expeller pressed, it's, it's processed a little bit differently than some of the refined coconut oils. But um, I like to use it, I'm making a mess here. Um, I like to use it for things that I don't want to have taste like coconut. You'd be very surprised to learn about me that I don't like the flavor of coconut. Um, I, I, it took a long time for me to actually even want to use any coconut products when I first switched to paleo and dairy free because I've never been like a coconut flavored person. I don't like coconut cream pie. I don't like candy bars with coconut in them. Um, although I do have to say I like real coconut flavor a lot better than that like sweetened shredded coconut that I was used to. So I was hesitant. Um, and so sometimes I tried to hide that flavor. So in that case, I like to use expeller press. So if I'm making eggs or, you know, scrambled eggs or something like that, that I don't want everything to taste like Thai food, I'll use expeller pressed. Uh, hi, Danielle. My husband and I are new at paleo, but we're on a serious budget. Have you found it to be cheaper to buy gluten-free or make gluten-free, like bread, snacks, nut flours? Oh, it is definitely cheaper to make everything, I think. Um, the the gluten-free market is kind of blowing up and a lot of retailers and food companies are taking full advantage of it. And they're putting everything out there and slapping gluten-free on the title and charging um, a premium for it, in my opinion. So, you know, first of all, most of that stuff that is out there is not even healthy anyways. Uh, people find that when they first switch to gluten-free that they actually end up eating worse than they would have before just because it has the gluten-free label on it and you kind of grasp at everything you can. Um, so I would definitely make everything homemade if you have time. Obviously, some of the convenience items are super helpful. Um, and so, you know, if you need to buy some things here and there, then definitely do that. Um, but yes, for budget, I would say buying or making things is definitely going to be budget friendly. Also, I do have to say, um, the baked goods are where, where you spend a lot of money. So the nut flours, the honey, the maple syrup, those things are really pricey. Um, you know, if you save those as an occasional treat, which is not only better for you anyways, but also better for your budget, um, you really won't end up spending more money than when you ate a conventional diet. I mean, you're eating meats and vegetables and, you know, produce and things like that. Um, and so that's where you're going to spend the bulk of your money is the ready-made goods and the ingredients to make baked goods. 
Are you going to have a kid's cookbook or do you already? I do not yet. Um, that is probably my next book, but we haven't decided on anything yet. It probably wouldn't be just kids. It would kind of be like a family friendly, which all of my recipes are family friendly considering I do have two kids. Um, but yeah, I think I will do one that's focused that way with lunches and baby foods and things like that, hopefully at some point. And what kind of coconut milk do you use again? So this today was um, natural value. This one, like I said, is guar gum free and it's BPA free. Um, the other one that I use is native forest. And so um, that one's BPA free, but does contain guar gum, but it makes a really great coconut milk whipped cream and it's super smooth. Um, and so, and I, I like the flavor of it. Also, I'm going to start just putting, oh, I think I can add a little bit more, um, putting the tops on. And as you can see, this will probably make like eight to 10 um, popsicles. So you're gonna want a couple extra molds. <laughs> um, is the coconut milk straight from the can or do you ever dilute it with water first? Nope, I never dilute it with water. Um, if you're getting a coconut milk can that just says coconut milk, it doesn't say like light or it doesn't say coconut cream. Um, there's already coconut water in it. That's, it separates, so it's the meat and the water. Um, so there's no need to dilute it. Those are all the questions. All right. Great. Well, anybody else before we sign off? No? Okay. Well, I hope you guys try these. I also hope that those of you who are having cold weather get some warm weather soon. Um, and again, like I said, I will try to put these up on um, the recipe up on the blog soon. And I think um, I'm going to start doing these live videos frequently. Um, I'd love to pick a time and a day that I just do so that you guys all know just to show up. Um, so we'll see how tonight does, 4 o'clock Pacific, 7 o'clock Eastern. I know that's dinner time and that's also like school pickup or sports pickup. It's going to be hard to find a time that works for everybody. Um, but luckily this video can be replayed anytime on Facebook. Um, I will also download it and put it up on my YouTube channel so you guys can find it anytime. Um, but let me know in the comments if you think this is a good time. Let me know if you enjoy these, if there's anything that you'd like to see me make. I'm going to pop these in the freezer and we'll see you next time.